Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera everyone. In this session, I'm going to show you on how to answer individual assignment part 2. So in individual assignment part 2, we have 5 questions and in this specific session, we are going to cover or discuss question 1 that is related to chapter 6 continuous probability distribution in question one we have two sub questions the first sub questions is related to the normal probability distribution while the second sub question for question one is related to the exponential probability distribution so let us at first discuss the first sub question for question one where if i can read it the weight of competition pumpkins at the circleville pumpkin show in circleville ohio can be represented by a normal distribution with a mean of 703 pounds and a standard deviation of 347 pounds a find the probability that a randomly selected pumpkin weigh at least 1622 pounds b find the probability that a randomly selected pumpkin weigh between 465.1 and 1622 pounds so as i mentioned just now in order for us to deal with or to answer sub question one we have to refer to the normal probability distribution. So, the normal probability distribution is the most important distribution for describing a continuous random variable. And it is also widely used in statistical inference. In fact, this normal probability distribution is used or related to many other chapters in business statistics for example apart from chapter 6 we also use normal probability distribution to discuss chapter 7 chapter 8 chapter 9 and chapter 10 which is the hypothesis testing so this normal probability distribution has been used in a wide variety of applications. For example, we use the normal probability distribution to estimate the probability for heights of people, scientific measurements, test scores, amounts of rainfall, and for many other applications. In order to estimate the normal probability distribution, First and foremost, we have to convert the normal probability distribution into the standard normal distribution. So in order to convert the normal probability distribution into standard normal distribution, we have to use this formula where Z, which is the standard normal distribution value, is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation so z is the z value or the standard normal distribution value while x is the normal distribution value that we want to estimate the probability from mu here on the other hand represents the mean value of the estimation divided by standard deviation for the estimation so here we can think of z as a measure of the number of standard deviation x is from our mean value or from the mu to make it more easy to understand let us look into one example so here we have an example for pep zone Pep zone sells auto parts and supplies, including a popular multi grade motor oil. In a typical day, Pep zone managed to sell an average of 15 gallons with a standard deviation of 
6 gallons. What is the probability that Pepzone managed to sell 20 gallons of motor oil in a day by assuming that the data is normally distributed? So this term here, assuming that the data is normally distributed, helps us to uh, determine that we have to use the normal probability distribution formula in order to determine the probability for this specific case for this specific situation so as i mentioned before this the first step that we have to take the first step that we will take in order to determine the probability is to convert the normal distribution value into the standard normal distribution value in other words we will convert the x value into z value so z is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation so we need to have these three important informations in order to determine the probability so as we know, x is equal to 20, while mu, which is the mean value of our distribution, is equal to 15, divided by 6, which is the uh, standard deviation for the estimation. So here we have z value that is equal to 0 0.83. So step number 2 is to find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z that is equal to 0 0.83. In other words, step 2 is associated to finding the value of the probability based on z that is equal to 0 0.83. So, in order to help us to determine the specific probability based on this z value that is equal to 0 0.83, we have to refer to the standard normal distribution table or the normal distribution table. So here we have a simplified version of the normal distribution table that we can use to identify the probability based on specific z value. Remember, our z value is equal to 0 0.83. So here, from this specific table, we can identify the probability for that z value of 0 0.83. So 0 0.80, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, and 0 0.83 so here we can tell that when z is equal to 0 0.83 the probability is equal to 0 0.7967 so this is the probability when our z value is equal to 0 0.83 the probability is 79.67% or 0 0.7967. Here, we have the same situation or the same case, PEP zone, but the difference between this second case with the previous example that we have is that in this example, the number of gallons that we wanted to estimate the probability from is uh, has been changed from 20 gallons to 18 gallons what is the probability that pepzone managed to sell 18 gallons of motor oil in a day by assuming that the data is normally distributed just as i mentioned before this the first step is to convert the normal distribution into the standard normal distribution by using the formula that we have in this slide. Z is equal to X minus mu over standard deviation. So here, instead of 20, 
our x is now equal to 18 minus 15 over 6 now we have z value that is equal to 0 0.50 so step number two is to determine the probability based on this specific z value of 0 0.50 so in order to determine the probability based on this specific z value we can refer to the normal distribution table so here we have a standardized we have a simplified normal distribution table that can uh, be used to determine the probability for z that is equal to 0.50 so here, if you look into the circle, you can identify or see the probability value when z is equal to 0 0.50. More specifically, the probability when z is equal to 0 0.50 is 0 0.6915 or 69.15%. So this is the probability when z is equal to 0 0.50 in other words this is the probability when the number of gallons is equal to 18 gallons if we are referring to the x value instead of the z value so what is the probability that pepzone managed to sell between 18 gallons and 20 gallons of motor oil in a day by assuming that the data is normally distributed so if you look into this question it is actually related to question 1b where you are required to determine the probability in between two x values in this case 18 gallons and 20 gallons since we know that the probability value for 18 gallons is equal to 0 0.6915 while the probability value for 20 gallon is equal to 0 0.7967 thus the probability between 18 to 20 gallons is 0 0.7967 minus 0 0.6915 that is equal to 0 0.10 in other words, the probability that Pepzone managed to sell between 18 gallons and 20 gallons of motor oil in a day by assuming that the data is normally distributed is equal to 10.52%. So that is how we answer question 1. In order to answer question 2 or sub question 2 under question 1 we have to refer to the exponential distribution so if i can read it again the customer arrived at a drive through teller window of a bank they stay in line when the teller is busy the service time is exponentially distributed with a mean of four minutes a what is the probability that the next customer in line will take longer than seven minutes to be served b what is the probability that the next customer in line will take less than eight minutes to be served and c what is the probability that the next customer in line will take between three and six minutes to be so, so as I mentioned before this, in order for us to answer sub-question 2, we have to refer to the exponential probability distribution. So the exponential probability distribution, if you can read from this slide, is useful in describing the time it takes to complete a task or the time it take to complete a certain process so this exponential random variables can also be used to describe 
time between vehicle arrivals at two toll booth, time required to complete the questionnaire, the distance between major defects in a highway. Basically, this exponential probability distribution is used to determine the probability for certain time length or the probability based on certain distance or certain intervals. So, in the exponential probability distribution, there is a term called the density function. So, the density function is equal to 1 over mu multiplied by E. In this case, E represents the Euler's number. Okay, E represents the Euler's number that is equal to 2.71828 to the power of negative x over mu. Negative x is the value of the exponential distribution that we wanted to estimate the probability from while mu is equal to the mean value for the exponentially distributed variables. x representing the specific value for exponentially distributed data while mu here represents the average value for this specific exponentially distributed data. So apart from the density function, another term that we have to know is the cumulative probabilities. So cumulative probabilities is equal to 1 minus Euler's number to the power of negative x0 over mu. So this x0 is the specific value or some specific value of x that we want to determine the probability from. In order to help us to understand even more about the exponential probability distribution, here we have an example. Al's full service pump. The time between arrivals of cars at Al's full service gas pump follows an exponential probability distribution with a mean time between arrivals of 3 minutes. Al would like to know the probability that the time between two successive arrivals will be two minutes or less. So in order to answer this specific question, all that we have to do is to use the cumulative probability formula over here. So here, we know that the x value is equal to 2, while the mean value is equal to 3. Thus, 1 minus Euler's number that is equal to 2.71828 to the power of negative 2 over 3 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5134 and equal to 0 0.4866. So this is the probability. So this is the probability that the time between two successive arrivals will be 2 minutes or less. In other words, the probability that the time between two successive arrivals will be 2 minutes or less is equal to 48.66% when the mean time between arrivals is equal to 3 minutes. So you can apply the same concept that we have discussed in order to answer question 2 or sub-question 2.